Hello and welcome to a new episode, first for 2020, of Origlopedia. Uh, so, Happy New Year, everybody. And this one is going to be relatively short and on a different topic. Uh, there's been a number of people asking how to connect their Auric to uh, an actual monitor or modern TV uh, because uh, despite all the high quality cable of the universe, it's still a standard Auric and uh, the signal is uh, approximative, it's not 100% compatible with a uh, normal PAL uh, signal. And old analog TV, they had no problem with that, but modern uh, uh, modern screens, they have a very accurate digital signal and sometimes they just get confused. So, uh, assuming that uh, you have a screen which does not accept this card, what you can use is a scan converter, a video converter. Uh, I'm going to show you that one, uh, which does work. Uh, it's relatively uh, cheap. You can get it uh, easily uh, from eBay, AliExpress, and this kind of thing. Um, one important thing is uh, there are many that look like identical uh, with the same uh, box, HD. It does not mean it's the same. Uh, Many of these Chinese products have dozens of uh, version revisions. They don't have all the same feature set, so there is not a 100% warranty that this particular one, uh, if you see it, uh, something that looks like that would work. Um, that being said, I've seen another, some uh, few other YouTube videos of uh, people uh, showing their uh, Auric thing on somewhere using that, and it works for them as well. So. I would say that it's a relatively safe bet, plus they are relatively cheap. Uh, there are some other models I've seen. Uh, I had one. Uh, I've tried to find it, uh, no idea what it is. Um, it is uh, elongated uh, with the ridges on the side. It, it did not work at all. Zero signal, nothing at all. Um, then I'm going to show you uh, the OSSC, the Open Source Scan Converter, on why you will choose one or the other. So I'm going to show you that first. So it's actually easy. You have a five volt uh, DC. Which gives you small power light. You plug this cart at the end, at the bottom. And you plug the HDMI output on the other side. And you select HDMI. And since it's an Auric, you have to switch off. Switch on. Hello. Yeah. Uh, and as you can see, the picture is quite okay, but there is one major issue. This box so I don't know if they are all like that, but every time you the signal change is started or removed, you get this display. Source card, input PAL, output 1280 by 720, 50 hertz. Um, in this case, it worked because uh, the auto detect worked on my screen, ha was happy with it. Uh, but I had a screen on which the default uh, uh, output will not work. Uh, the thing absolutely wanted to have full HD uh, as an input, so 720p was not working. And for that to work, then you need to press uh, the buttons to choose between 720, 1920 by 1080p, black screen, 800 by 600 at 60 So, on 1024 by 768. Uh, the thing is, it works. Uh, the problem is that if you try to do some uh, recording, a video capture, uh, to put uh, your games on YouTube, for example, or in videos in general, every time you're going to have this display appearing, it's super annoying. And the time it takes to change from one, res one resolution to the other, uh, can make some things freak out, like my uh, Avermedia capture board, it does not like it at all. That being said, it works. Then the next contender is the OSSC. 
So I'm going to switch off that. This thing basically works in the same way. It also has a, a SCART input. Uh, there is also HDMI output. The main difference is that this thing comes with a, a, a remote control. Where you can choose uh, RGB, RGBS, uh, a number of things like that. And you can see there is no display about the frequency because this is all displayed on the small screen there. Uh, other cool things uh, this thing has is that it has native support for skylines. So you can make it look like uh, good old style uh, black, uh, black line things. This aspect ratio is not correct. Uh, so basically, the scan converter correctly convert uh, the auric uh, ellipse to uh, something which is not a circle. Uh, the problem is that this screen is also white screen, so now it's even more. Uh, basically, it should have wider black bounds there. So. If you want to use uh, one of these things, you probably also want to use a screen which is not white screen. It's, it just looks uh, uh, ridiculous. And cool, I am here and it's working, but what if you want to record? So. What you can do is something like that. Uh, people have been telling me that Avermedia was terrible hardware and that it was uh, always crashing and not reliable or the driver was terrible. Uh, it's been working for me. Um, so basically, this works both with either that or the SSC, and the idea is that you take the SCART in the scan converter and the HDMI output of the device in the HDMI input of the capture card, so you can capture there. And because this capture card also has a, a secondary direct uh, pass-through uh, output, it can be on the screen directly. Uh, which I put on my second uh, second input. So by doing that, I can play with my auric directly without any latency uh, from the capture card on the screen, but I can also record and save uh, uh, in full HD or 720p uh, the video, and then I can use that in my Auricopedia or the video. And it's working quite nicely. Uh, one thing I had to do was that I had to cheat uh, with the computer. Uh, basically, I installed a, a jack. Uh, so I was able to plug my, uh, my audio input there, which is why when I do that, not sure if you can see on this thing, Ping, 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 ping. Because if you don't, uh, the the auric SCART signal does not have sound. So if you only use HDMI uh, by itself, you're not going to have any sound on your screen or on your capture. So on my case, this cable is connected there on the input uh, of the other media. Um, and that's mostly it. Uh, now. There are other differences between that and the OSSC. Uh, the OSSC is much more expensive than this thing. And the main reason is that this thing is basically uh, 
what we call uh, roughly uh, a scan doubler. What it does is that it uh, receives a full frame from this card, uh, store it in the memory, and then it processes it and outputs a frame, which means you get a full frame display delay between the moment it's received and the moment it's sent. <clears throat> so there is already latency on many of the screens, especially TVs, because they do a lot of processing, smooth mode, which is why you should use a gaming mode, else you're going to have problems. Uh, it would be fine for adventure games, but if you try to play a Twitch game like Defense Force, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, on one of the previous videos uh, at the end, I've been playing Defense Force for 10 minutes and did some quite good high scores, because I was playing directly on the Eric connected to a CRT TV. And it's a very twitchy game where almost pixel perfect collisions. And if you get frame latencies caused by the emulators or the various levels of display conversion, uh, you die very fast. <coughs> so this thing works, but you get a full frame delay. The OSSC is much smarter. Uh, obviously, it's not magic, but Technically, you don't need to wait a full frame before regenerating the signal. Uh, what these things do is that they convert a 240p uh, signal uh, to something bigger, uh, taller. So they need to make taller lines. But you don't need to wait a full screen. You can just wait one line uh, and then generate um, uh, the new ones. So what this thing does is that it basically process scan line by scan line. It receives one skyline, and as soon as it's available, it outputs the uh, extended uh, the extended picture. So instead of having a full frame delay, you get a skyline delay, or give or take. There are probably some other things. Uh, now it's not perfect. Uh, I'm maybe a moron. I did not find out how to have this thing by default switch to RGB. Every time I switch it on and off, it's in. Uh, one of the useless modes, which I don't care. Um, the UI has been basically mapped on the standard uh, remote control. It is not necessarily super easy to understand. Um, and it is possible to enable modes that will basically make the display not work. Well, like if you play too much with a, a phase, uh, phase sampling uh, on Skyline type on number of skyline. Uh, I've been able to get the display to the point where uh, it will totally freak out. In which case, you switch off and off and it's, uh, it's fine again. So, it's a very good device, but it's expensive. Uh, I can't think of any justification for having that if you are not going to do uh, uh, high quality videos. Or if you want really to uh, do some uh, competitive or ink uh, uh, game playing, uh, like comparing high scores, uh, and there is really no uh, no particular reason for doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, maybe I could show you that. Um, this is Erebus. This is a brand new uh, SD card based solution to load uh, games from SD card. There you go. And that also works uh, with the capture software. Ah, 
Yeah, um, I'm not sure if that was exhaustive. Uh, if I can find again uh, the other uh, uh, device capture, um, maybe I will show you. Uh, I can try to find links and put them in the video about uh, both that in the comment section, in the description, sorry. Um, um, yeah, that's it. So, first video of the year. Enjoy!